What's up guys, this is Gerard back to you with another tutorial video on taxation. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about input tax in relation to value added taxes here in the Philippines. So in this video, I'm going to be defining what input VAT is and also giving to you the list of transactions where input VAT occurs. And then enumerating the kinds of input VAT here in the Philippines and then give you an illustrative problem showing journal entries to record input VAT. So if you haven't watched my video on VAT yet, I strongly suggest that you watch that video first for you to appreciate more what I will be talking about here. So I'll link that right up here. So as I've said, input VAT is a type of VAT that occurs from the purchase of goods and or services of a VAT registered person. So generally, if you would be claiming such input VAT, the purchase of goods and or services should be evidenced by a VAT invoice or an official receipt. So these are the transactions where input VAT may occur. Any input tax on the following transactions could be credited against output tax. First one, purchase or importation of goods, purchase of real properties which a VAT was actually paid, purchase of services which a VAT was actually paid, transactions considered as deemed sale, transitional input tax, presumptive input tax. So according to the tax code, generally we have four kinds of input VAT. We have the actual input VAT, the transitional input VAT, presumptive input VAT, and the standard input VAT. So the four types of input tax, we have actual input tax. This is the 12% VAT on the purchase of goods and or services or importation of goods of a VAT registered entity. Now for transitional input tax, so a person who becomes liable to VAT or those voluntarily becomes VAT registered shall be allowed input tax on beginning inventory equivalent to 2% or actual VAT paid for such goods, materials, and supplies, whichever is higher, shall be creditable against related output VAT. Presumptive input tax, as the term suggests, because of the nature of products produced, we cannot really exactly determine the actual input tax attributable in such processing of products. Such products like sardines, mackerel, milk, refined sugar, and packed noodle-based instant meals, and others. Lastly, Standard input tax are input taxes in connection to government sales. When we say government sales, this includes sales to any of its political subdivisions, instrumentalities, or agencies, including government-owned and controlled corporation. It shall be computed as 7% based on the sale to government. Now let's go to the illustrative problems. Now take note of the different journal entries we will be doing depending on what type of input VAT is involved. Now let's go to our first illustrative problem, which is actual input VAT. A company purchased in cash from another company goods amounting to 70,000 VAT exclusive. Both entities are VAT registered. The goods were sold on the following month on account for 112,000 VAT inclusive. Now the journal entries will be to record the purchase with input VAT with debit purchases or inventory 70,000 and then input VAT 8,400 and then cash is credited 78,400. To record the sale with output VAT with debit accounts receivable 112,000 and then sales and output VAT is credited for 100,000 and 12,000 respectively. To compute VAT payable, we now compare output VAT which is 12,000 and input VAT of 8,400. So the VAT payable is 3,600. To record VAT payable, output VAT is debited for 12,000 and then input VAT is credited 8,400 and then VAT payable is also credited for 3,600. Now let's go to our second problem which is on transitional input VAT. Now on January 2020, a company purchased in cash from another company which is VAT registered goods amounting to 70,000 VAT exclusive. Now on February, the company became liable for VAT. The goods were sold on February on account for 112,000 VAT inclusive. The journal entries will be now to record the purchase before being VAT liable with debit purchases or inventory 78,400 and then credit cash 78,400. Now to determine the transitional input tax, we will be comparing the actual input tax on such purchase 
and the 2% of the beginning inventory, then select whichever is higher between the two. So actual input VAT is 12% multiplied by 70,000, that's 8,400. And then 2% of the beginning inventory, which is 2% multiplied by 70,000, that's 1,400. So select whichever is higher between the 12% input VAT or the 2% of the beginning inventory cost. So in this case, the actual input tax is higher, which is 8,400. So that will be our transitional input VAT. To record the transitional input VAT, we debit input VAT, which is transitional, 8,400, and then credit purchases or inventory, 8,400. To record the sale with output VAT, during which the entity is now VAT liable, we debit account receivable, 112,000, and then sales and output VAT, which is 100,000 and 12,000 respectively, is credited. To compute VAT payable, again, we will be comparing output VAT with our input VAT, which is transitional, so we have VAT payable of 3,600. And then to record the VAT payable after updating registration as VAT taxpayer, output VAT is 12,000 and then input VAT is credited 8,400 and then VAT payable is also credited 3,600. Now let's go to our third illustrative problem which is on presumptive input VAT. Now the company is a VAT registered manufacturer of refined sugar. So purchase in cash raw materials from another company sugar cane amounting to 70,000. Now the refined sugar produced were sold on the following month on account for 112,000 VAT inclusive. So to record the purchase, we debit purchase or inventory 70,000 and then cash is credited 70,000. So to record the sale, it's the same with the other cases. Now to determine or record the presumptive input VAT, we debit input VAT which is presumptive 4% multiplied by 70,000, that's 2,800, and then other income is credited 2,800. So to compute VAT payable, again we will be comparing output VAT with input VAT which is presumptive, so our VAT payable is 9,200. And then to record VAT payable, we debit output VAT 12,000, and then input VAT which is presumptive is credited 2,800, so our VAT payable is 9,200 also credited. So let's go to our last illustrative problem which is on standard input VAT. So the company purchased in cash from another company goods amounting to 70,000 VAT exclusive. Now both entities are VAT registered. Now the goods were sold in the following month to a government agency on account for 112,000 VAT inclusive. Now the journal entries will be to record the purchase with input VAT with debit purchases or inventory 70,000 Input VAT is also debited 8,400 and then cash is credited 78,400. So to record the sale with output VAT, it's still the same with the other cases. And then to record the receipt of payment from the government agency, debit creditable VAT 5,000 and then cash is also debited 107,000 and then accounts receivable is credited 112,000. Now under section 114C of the tax code as amended, government agencies are required to withhold 5% before making any payment on account of purchase of goods and services which are subject to value-added tax. Now the government agency will also issue to the government supplier BIR form 2306 representing such withholding. So to close VAT related accounts, we debit output VAT 12,000 and then credit input VAT standard 7,000 and then creditable VAT is also credited for 5,000. So as you can see, there is no actual VAT payable to be remitted to the BIR. We have actual input tax of 8,400. While standard input tax is unique because it is computed based on government sales. So in this case, standard input tax is computed by multiplying from the 100,000 government sale 7% which is 7,000. And then as you can see, there is a difference of 1,400. This in turn shall be close to miscellaneous expense. So to close the unused input VAT at the end of the period, debit miscellaneous expense 1,400 and input VAT is credited 1,400. And that's it. So thanks for watching. So if you found this video very helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe for more tax tutorials to help you improve your skills and knowledge in taxation. Also, hit that notification bell so you won't miss any tax tutorials. So this is Gerard. Have a great day.